everyone zeddy here again today the brand new video and we're just a couple days away from the release of scholomance academy and i thought it would be fun to take a look at what i feel will be the top five most powerful impactful cards in both standard and wild and man there are some powerful cards this was not easy to come up with and there are plenty of omissions or uh, cards that you might disagree with so let me know in the comments below after we go through this uh what your picks are and all of that, what you disagree with, but these are my top five for both Standard and Wild, most powerful, impactful cards coming out in Skull of Mines Academy. Starting in Wild, number five most powerful card, I believe to be Dr. Krastanov, the Rogue Warrior Dual Class Legendary. It's a five mana, four, four rush minion, and it gives your weapon plus one, plus one whenever he attacks. Uh, this card just feels really good in like Pirate Warrior, and Odd Rogue and King's Bane Rogue. All these decks love this. Um, they all want to upgrade and buff their weapons. Odd Rogue, not as much, but when you have a 2 2 dagger, I think that's a very powerful effect. And I feel this card just fits right in at home there. And you can even consider it in like a Bomb Warrior deck, like Galakron Bomb Warrior. All that could kind of stuck stuff has been quite popular in Wild as well. So I think that this card will fit into multiple decks and do very well there. Number five most powerful standard card, I believe to be Devout Pupil. It is a six mana, four, five Divine Shield dual class minion for Paladin and Priest. And for every spell you have played on a friendly or targeted on a friendly minion, it will cost one less. So this card when it can easily become zero mana and its base stat line starts at, at six mana, four, five as a Sunwalker, which is like a borderline playable minion. So it won't take very long for it to be just incredibly good. And I believe both Priest and Paladin will utilize this very well. Paladin probably the best with the pure Paladin builds with all of like the Librem of Wisdoms and all of that stuff. But Priest with the Grave Runes and the possible Tempo Priest lists, there's just so many possibilities for it. So this card seems absolutely crazy to cheat out a cheap taunt that you can immediately buff up will be super impactful and I expect this card to be all over the ladder very quickly after the release of the expansion. My number four most powerful wild card I believe to be Lightning Bloom, the dual class spell for Shaman and Druid. It's a zero mana spell and it gives two mana crystals this turn over low two. Kael'thas in wild is absolutely insane with Druid. You have UI overflow and you have, like, the new 10-minute spell that's being introduced. You have so many different ways to abuse it. Plus, you have Biology Project, which is not available in Standard. And there's a lot of insane archetypes. And I believe they'll definitely use Lightning Bloom, whether it be a Miracle Jade or just using it in a combo deck. It's probably going to break the game. And then you also have Shaman, which can utilize it. Even, even Shaman, pardon the pun, can break this and cheat out a 7-7 or just get a bunch of big stuff out early. This card is going to be just ridiculous. In both formats, we'll get to that. And it's just very, very powerful, and I can't see it not having an absolutely huge, significant impact on the wild metagame. The number four most powerful standard card, I believe, will be Glide. It's the uh, Demon Hunter four mana spell. You shuffle your hand into your deck and then draw four cards. And then if you outcast, your opponent does the same. So basically, you're playing a tempo aggro Demon Hunter deck, and you just you know, vomit through your hand like you like to do, and instead of top decking Skull, you can top deck Glide, which is cheaper, and draw four cards right away, while also disrupting your opponent. There is the downside I keep hearing about how it's bad against aggro, and I made the point, or the comment in my review, that, well, it's not that bad against aggro, because, well, you can choose to not outcast it. There is the argument, well, if you don't outcast it, you only really draw a card or two, because you have to have a left and right, and that means you have three cards, and basically you draw two cards, so... My argument is, Divine Favor was shitty in the mirror, and I believe Glide will be too, but it doesn't make it a non-insane card. It's a good against any slower deck, it can still do great work in the mirror, since you get to draw the four first, and play them first, and your opponent might be setting stuff up. Yes, if their hand's empty, you give them cards, but again, it's a, I feel like it's not the biggest downside in the world, and the card is just ridiculous. It's a four-mana draw four. It's good in so many matchups. It has a bit of a drawback in maybe an aggro matchup, but I think this card's nuts. I think it's busted. I think you're going to be infuriated if you're not playing an aggressive deck and you get completely screwed over by then flipping your deck over. And yeah, I expect Glide to be extremely powerful and very rage-inducing, which 
believe it or not, I can get pretty upset about things. It's pretty crazy. Number three most powerful wild card, I believe to be Trick Totem. It's a dual class shaman and mage card. It's a two mana totem, zero three in stats. At the end of your turn, cast a spell that costs three or less. This card seems absolutely and utterly insane at even shaman. Even shaman is debatably the best deck in wild. Alongside, like, it's it's alongside Quest Mage and Disco Lock. It's one of the top tier decks. And it's getting, a cut, like we already mentioned, Lightning Bloom. It's also getting Trick Totem. And this card can just straight up immediately scam with, like, it high rolls a three mana spell or whatever. And it's it's already high rolling. And then you're already playing your zero mana stuff and buffing it and copying it. And this thing's going to get out of control. It's going to be ridiculous and the only way you're going to win a lot of the time is oh did your opponent's spell screw them over i think this card is going to be an absolute menace in that deck and i'm quite terrified to see how it plays out um any other deck not so much but even shaman is going to be very prevalent um once this expansion comes out and trick totem is going to be right in the middle of it it's going to be uh quite the terror uh number three in standard i believe to be secret passage the new one mana rogue spell. You replace your hand. Um, you replace your hand with five cards from your deck, and then you swap back next turn. So basically, you just get a cheap re reload of your hand. Like you, you have a bunch of cards you can't play or whatever. You just quickly one mana get a bunch of stuff, and then you might generate value. You might even hit like Galakron and be able to play that and do all sorts of stupid stuff. Um, the implications of this card are just insane. Like it's a very, very powerful card. And uh, I cannot see it pushing, like, Aggro Rogue to a playable state, as well as just giving extra juice to Galakron Rogue, and who knows what else? Like, there's just so many possibilities of this card. It's absolutely insane, ridiculously powerful, and I opened a Golden, so I'm quite ho hopeful that it'll get nerfed, and then I get some dust. Number two in Wild, speaking of a, a powerful card, I'm gonna go with Secret Passage again. That's right, in, in Wild, I'm putting it number two. As the most powerful card to impact wild. Why? Because Odd Rogue, which has been really close to being a top tier deck lately, can run this. Kingsbane Rogue can run this. Highlander Rogue can run... Like, there's a lot of archetypes that can utilize this card, and it's going to be very powerful in those decks. And I always find when I face an Odd Rogue, one of their biggest weaknesses is they kind of just run out of stuff, even with the lackeys and all that, because they only have, like, Miscreant. And some people run Galakron, but you don't have a lot of invokes to utilize there. And, well, Secret Passage just lets you quickly reload your hand and maybe get some generating value generators and all that, and then you get your old hand back, and that can do some pretty crazy stuff. So, yeah, Secret Passage is going to be a very powerful card, in my opinion, in both Standard and Wild. I'm rating it very highly. What else is going to be very powerful in Standard and Wild? Lightning Bloom, number two on my list for Standard. That's right. I have two cards, both on Standard and Wild. They're that insane. Uh, Lightning Bloom, again, it's Innervate, old school Innervate with Overload. And yeah, Kilfoss is a Standard card as well, and he can be abused there as well in both Shaman and Druid, probably more so in Druid in terms of Standard. But again, Shaman can utilize it. You have that 10 mana spell. You can... High roll, and you have all sorts of other tools. Even in a druid, you can probably utilize that seven mana cheat out 5B spell. Like that could be very powerful. The the things that you can make basically the mana cheat of this card can make even a mediocre card really good because you can reliably cheat it out really early. And if you get an insane upside, the overload downside just doesn't really matter if you create an unanswerable board state. So I am quite terrified of lightning bloom. I think it's might be a little too powerful but you know we'll have to wait and see maybe we're maybe we're all over exaggerating and the the overload is such a big deal that old school innervate really isn't that big a problem i think it is though but we'll find out and i wanted to do a couple honorable mentions before i get to my number one in standard and wild uh there's just a few cards that i think will be extremely powerful that i didn't want to leave off the list but i can only put 10 cards so First is Lord Barov, the uh, Paladin Warrior Dual Class Legendary. It's a 3-mana three 3-2. Three Battle Cry set all minions' health to 1. Death Rattle deal 1 damage to all minions. This card is going to be really insanely good in, like, controlish warrior decks. Like, the more, 
like the bomb warrior type not so much i don't think the enraged warrior but it even might be good there and yeah paladin can utilize this very well with consecration wild pyro stop all sorts of things they could do just their one ones whatever you know it's gonna be a very good card um lore keeper Pulkiet is also an honorable mention it's a four mana four or five that uh reshuffles your deck from most expensive to cheapest so you can play it in, like quest warlock and manipulate your malagos to be next or you can play this in wild and like sure i mean like an otk paladin where you guarantee that you draw holy when well, you play your holy wrath and hit for 25 with a shrivala or a molten giant or you could put it in like a deck like reno priest and guarantee that your next draw is anduin and we know how important it is to draw anduin in that deck so there is a ton of implications for this card in standard and wild and it will certainly make an impact and lastly is just demon companion the one mana companion spell uh for demon hunter and hunter it's like animal companion Half the stats, a third of the cost. I just think this card's ridiculous. It's going to see a play in a lot of Demon Hunter and Hunter decks. I don't think it's, like, super powerful that it dictates everything. I just think it's a very, very, very good card that's, like, auto-include in a lot of certain decks. So, those are my honorable mentions. Let's get to the main event. What are my number one cards for power level in Standard and Wild? Number one for Wild is Mind Render Lucia. It's the Priest Legendary. It's a 2-mana 1-3, and it swaps hands in deck with your opponent and switchbacks next turn. Why am I rating this so highly? Well, right now, Reno Priest is very close to being like a top tier 1 deck. Its biggest weakness is Quest Mage and Combo Decks. Mind Render Elusia destroys Combo Decks. You just play it, you take a piece of their combo away, and you win. It's insane. Um, it's not great against aggro, but you're playing a Highlander deck, you can afford to run cards that aren't that great against aggro. You have Reno, Zeth, Ford Clears, Healing, all of that, you could put in a Lucia. I mean, people already run, like, Lotheb and Rat to try and counter these decks. Well, you don't need that if you just have a Lucia and you yoink their combo. Against Quest Mage, I'm not on the... totally sure... If this card's going to do the trick. I, I had like a little Twitter discussion with a meaty. He thinks it's going to work. But myself, I feel like it's still too slow against Quest Mage. It's hard. You can't play their giants. The, the, the mana giants. You haven't played any cards that didn't start from outside your deck. So you can't play them. You can't dump them. Arcane giants, you usually don't play that many spells. So you can't dump them. And if your opponent's smart, they're not going to activate their quest before they do it. So the idea will be that they're going to not play their... Not activate your quest. You're going to play Lucia, Seal their... Apprentice, Cyclone, and all of that. Dump it so they can't complete the quest. And that's how you'll counter it. I don't think it'll pay out. But that's kind of against... That doesn't really matter to me. Because I feel like... One of the ways you counter Reno Priest. Besides just playing Quest Mage. Is play cards... Play decks like Mally Druid. Play decks like... Uh, Mechathune Warlock to counter it. And now Elusia just renders that really pointless. Unless, you know, of course you bottom deck Elusia. So... This card's really, really powerful in that deck, and I think it's going to push Reno Priest absolutely over the top to the point where, like, why in the hell do we unnerf Raza? Which I've been saying since it's happened, but anyways. Yeah, number one on my list for Wild, Mind Render Elusia. Let's hope I'm wrong on that one, but, ugh, I'm scared. And in Standard, my number one is Voracious Reader. It's a two mana, one three neutral minion. At the end of your turn, draw until you have three cards. I'm going to point out a graphic here. This card's called Jeeves. He's a GVG mech, and he's seen play throughout the history of Hearthstone. He costs two more mana, has one more health, and he draws until you have three cards for both players. He is significantly worse than this card. He's two mana more, and he sees a ton of play in, like, Token Druid, in like um mech hunter and all those type of decks he sees play today in 2020 with all the power creep that's going on and it's coming to every single class in standard and wild and it's two mana and it's one-sided what in the absolute hell this should be on my wild list honestly but i'm just gonna put this as just a coverall i'm gonna cheat this is just broken in every format like, yeah, Jeeves is a mech. You could technically discount it and magneticize it and buff it. And it was one more health. But when this thing costs two mana, who cares? You're going to play the two mana one because you play it for the draw effect. And there's no downside of drawing for your aggro opponent. It's just for you. This card is broken and it's ridiculous. And it's going to be all over the place. 
every class that struggles for card draw for aggro, aggro purposes, like Paladin right now, because as I'm Divine Favor, doesn't matter. They have Voracious Reader now, so yeah, this meta is going to be very, very hyper aggro in my opinion, and Voracious Reader is going to be front and center, so yeah, look out. You're going to get pretty tilted against this guy, so that's my picks for all the top Five cards in Standard and Wild in terms of power level, their impact on the meta. Again, let me know what you think in the comments below. It's always a fun debate. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. You guys have been subbing like crazy, but there's still like 75% of my viewers don't sub, haven't subbed yet. So that's crazy. I appreciate everyone that's tuning in. But if you felt like I've earned your sub or you want to click that sub button to get these updates, feel free. It would mean a lot and it helps the channel a ton. Have a great day. Stay salty, my friends.